This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. So there has been an uproar over repair manuals for hospital equipment. I'm talking about this article here from iFixit. Heroic medical teams around the world are either dealing directly with or preparing for an onslaught. The impact is unprecedented. 4.8 million patients, 1.9 million admitted to ICU. Ventilators are necessary and they address issues with acute respiratory distress syndrome. These ventilators are crucial and being heavily utilized running nonstop. There's even a shortage on ventilators and and we can, you can go look at the politics surrounding that. We're not going to talk about it here. They're being used heavily and therefore they are occasionally breaking down. Biomedical technicians are the repair experts at hospitals and they are stretched thin. So iFixit is saying what they need from the medical community are model numbers of all of the ventilators in use, BiPAP machines that can also act as ventilators and other essential equipment, the estimates on what parts break, what might break, assuming, assuming an increased duty cycle, and advice on what parts will be needed to be reused but will be in short supply. That's what they need from the medical community. From everybody else, please help us find service manuals. Frank's Hospital Workshop has been the leading source of these online, and we want to mirror this information in case his website is inundated. Beyond the manuals, we could use help organizing and building out device pages with common medical equipment, reformatting service manuals to be more SEO friendly and easier for non-engineers to read, screenshot or trim PDFs for use in step-by-step -step guides, translate all of the above, upload it to our website and or send us an email. They want to create a accessible and comprehensive service manual resource for these kinds of ventilators. So that's interesting. Doesn't that implicate copyright? If we go over here to Frank's Hospital Workshop, they've got a lot of repair manuals here. Unless you are uploading a repair manual by Drager. I think that's how you pronounce that with the two dots over the A. I think that's, a, that's Drager. I could be wrong. Somebody correct me in chat. So apparently the manufacturer Drager does not want to provide any service manuals for their equipment, but a bunch of other companies either have provided manuals or have not issued takedown notices for them. Here is one from TechMe. TechMe does not want to provide their repair manual. Everybody else seems to have not sent a DMCA takedown notice. Pennsylvania calls on manufacturers to release their ventilator repair manuals. Joe Torcella, Pennsylvania State Treasurer, says, in a public health crisis, every second counts. There shouldn't be a single ventilator sitting in a closet because a hospital isn't able to make necessary repairs. I call on manufacturers to release this information, remove this barrier that hospitals are facing. Having enough ventilators to care for critically ill patients is vital. If the ventilators malfunction and operators don't have manuals, the results could be tragic. The ventilators are a matter of life or death. Oh, and that was the Delaware State Treasurer. Illinois says uh, it is incomprehensible that life-saving devices are sitting in hospitals waiting to be fixed. I call on manufacturers to step up and help. There is a petition, which I will try to remember to post into the description. Let me post this into my stories folder for right now. The Rhode Island treasurer has said every resource must be made available to fight. To protect public health, manufacturers must make ventilator repair manuals publicly available. Colorado says hospitals are working hard to keep every ventilator in service. So what if a manufacturer says, no, you can't have our repair manual. We own the copyright. Therefore, you can't even have it. We don't even want you to have it. We only our authorized repair centers and repair service people are allowed to have manuals. For example, John Deere does this with their tractors. Only authorized repair centers can get the John Deere repair manuals and John Deere software that reauthorizes new equipment. So just to go over the John Deere situation real quick, you buy a brand new tractor in 2020. It comes with all sorts of cool electronics and sensors and, and parts that when you go and put a, a you know, a, a, a 
combine or whatever you know uh, on the front I, i'm not a farmer please forgive me um you go and put a, a, a part or a tool onto the tractor well it needs to be authorized like digital rights management like it checks via a little chip or something that the part you are installing has actually been installed by a authorized repair center or has been in a purchased authorized part so if your something breaks on your tractor and that something is something that talks to the engine control unit or the tractor control unit or the software if you go and buy another part from an unauthorized center you're going to find that you're not authorized to install that part that you'll put the part on and connect it all up and it'll be physically functional except something electronically stops it from functioning because it wasn't authorized. This could be very similar. They don't want to provide repair manuals for ventilators. Now, I'm not saying the ventilators are, are sealed up with digital rights management. Maybe they are. There's certainly nothing stopping manufacturers from doing that, but they are looking for the physical repair manuals. What's the proper procedure to take it apart? What's the proper procedure to change out a board or a chip or a pump or a you know, a plastic piece or something. Where do you get those plastic parts? Where do you get those boards? Where do you get those chips, especially if they have to be programmed? So in other words, is there firmware that goes on a chip made by Texas Instruments or, or some other chip maker, so Intel, some semiconductor manufacturer, that then that chip gets programmed. Can we have the firmware for that? I'm not saying the hospitals don't have to pay something for these parts or these manuals, but it seems like in the middle of a crisis, having that level of control would be untenable. Having the biomed technicians not able to get a manual at all because they're not the authorized repair technicians could you imagine? Can, I mean, it's happening right now. Hospitals are overwhelmed. I can't imagine that there's suddenly a glut of ventilator repair technicians or suddenly a glut or, or, or a, a, you know, adequate supply of repair technicians that are able to go into hospitals and properly repair these devices. And they have to be repaired reliably. We don't want just anybody going in and making a guess as to how to repair these things. Certainly, there are people who are very smart with repairs, like Lewis Rossman, who could easily go in and figure out what part is wrong, or what part is damaged, and what part needs to be replaced. But what even Lewis Rossman does is use a repair manual, including sophisticated repair software that tells him what a voltage is supposed to be, or what a chip is supposed to do, or, or when um, you know PP3 EQ or whatever it is, you know, because because. I don't, I don't forget what, what, he, what, he, what he calls them all, but there's a couple of like those power rails that are supposed to be hot, and it, when, it's, when it's hot or when it's not, um, determines whether something functions or not. So these things should be available to repair groups or technicians. And what it sounds like is that companies are not um, making these available in certain circumstances. It's a crisis. We should all be working together. At, at the very most, someone maybe has to charge an amount of money uh, uh, a normal amount of money to get a copy of a repair manual. I think that sounds fair to me, but I don't think that ho that hospitals should find that manufacturers are using copyright law to protect their repair manuals from being used without authorization. Yeah, it's it's not often that copyright becomes a life or death situation. But in these situations, it can be where, you know, waiting a day to fix a ventilator could compromise someone's health drastically. And I was watching a video um, of one of these biomed techs, and he was saying that it's particularly hard on them because the ventilators have very little time in between uses. So normally they would do regular maintenance and, and just checking on it and sort of like, you know, how you're supposed to get your oil changed in your car every um, every so often that they end up having to skip some of those regular maintenance checks because the ventilator is needed and it is a life or death situation. And that means that they can fail more often because you're not doing some of the preventative stuff. And so biomed techs are just trying their hardest to keep everything up and running because everything's in such demand. And it's it's really scary that copyright could affect 
people's lives this way. Yeah. So here's the actual letter that the governor's or treasurers wrote, we write to you in our capacity as top fiscal officers. There's a shortage of ventilators. We are asking manufacturers of ventilators to do their part to assist overburdened healthcare systems caring for critically ill patients by agreeing to release all service manuals, service keys, and schematics during this crisis, enabling hospitals to make repairs to ventilators and maximize their supply and ability to serve more patients. Our healthcare workers are putting their own health and safety on the line every day to care for these patients and are desperate for ready solutions and expanded access to functioning ventilators, which we urge manufacturers to support, especially in this time of grave circumstances. We are in a public health emergency. Every second is vital. In some instances, service contracts have forced hospitals to wait more than a week for a manufacturer's technician to service equipment. So it's exactly what we feared. The service technicians are not readily available and the manufacturers won't give service manuals to unauthorized technicians. Hospitals are forced to take their own safety measures, disallowing external technicians to enter their facilities at the risk of more people coming into direct contact with the situation. We fear that this is an issue that will hurt rural and needy hospitals even harder, as often they may be using secondhand equipment without a maintenance contract or access to a service technician. When this equipment breaks down, even needing only minor repairs makes it unusable. So they have delivered a petition. Here's the petition. The US healthcare system lacks an adequate number of working ventilators. The PIRG delivered a 43,000 plus signature uh, petition to ventilators ventilator manufacturers, including GE Healthcare, Philips Siemens, Draeger, Hamilton, Medtronic, and more. Right now, ventilator repair and maintenance issues are life and death issues, says Nathan Proctor, right to repair campaign director with PIRG, who is leading the petition drive. Manufacturers of ventilators should immediately release service manuals, keys, so schematics, and uh, sir, he says service keys twice. Some manufacturers are making socially responsible changes to their repair process. For example, Medtronic has gone a step beyond releasing its manuals, providing access to certain parts of its design file. However, so many companies have increased their repair restrictions in recent years that the repair ecosystem is fragile in this time of crisis. We've been fighting for our right to repair medical technology since our founding seven years ago, says Guy Gordon Byrne, executive director of Repair.org. The coronavirus pandemic has proven that manufacturer restrictions on access to repair information is a recipe for disaster. And then so I fix it wrote their article and is collecting service manuals themselves. And they delivered the petition to 25 ventilator manufacturers, which reads, I urge you to immediately release information, manuals, access to error logs, diagnostic information, and other repair resources for hospital ventilators to help our hospitals combat the situation. So what do you think of that? Should manufacturers have to give up their copyrights to these repair manuals? Or, or rather, is it more of a moral situation where like, hey, the law is normally written that creative works can be protected. Is, is a repair manual even a pro copyright protected work? Well, yes. I think it's a copyright protected work in the same sense that a phone book is copyright protected. The actual facts in it should not be copyright protected, but the decision to arrange it and make it flow from A to B to C with steps of repair and all that, that sounds like there's some kind of copyright protection there. But the protection should be minimal. The protection should only be that which forwards the progress of science and the useful arts, that which is minimally creative, not that which simply says, chip ABC123 can fail. And when it does, it looks like this. And when it looks like that, the best way to verify it is with this test. And then once you've verified it with this test, you should you know, disconnect the machine or disconnect this board or whatever, and then replace this chip. That all sounds factual to me and therefore not copyright protected. So I think somewhere in between here is a way that someone could obtain a unauthorized copy of a repair manual and recreate it by recreating only the facts of each individual repair and doing so in a way that does not step on the manufacturer's uh, copyright protection in their creative works. 
So uh, remember, this is supposed to be an expression of a creative idea, not a way to control the factual information from getting out there. It's, it's copyright is not a censorship law. Copyright is a exploitation of creativity law. So if I make a movie, if I make music, if I make even a YouTube video here, you can go and use all the facts that I've spouted here. But what you can't do is outright copy my work. So if you want to go write an article about this situation with the right to repair and ventilator manuals and all that, you can use pretty much every fact. Or you can use every fact that I've spouted here, and you can probably even use some of my creative efforts as a fair use. But what you can't do is just go outright copy my video and post it somewhere else and make a profit off of it. What you can do is rewrite it as your own set of instructions, as your own set of steps from beginning to end. Um, you can even quote Leonard French without having to pay Leonard French. You can say, Leonard French said this. That's a fact, not a, not a creative expression. What you can't do is post the video of me saying it unless you're also making a fair use of it or have authorization. So yeah, somewhere in there is, is what's, what's, what's right and wrong in the moral sense as well. And I think in the moral sense, these ventilator manufacturers should be focusing on making money by selling and servicing ventilators while also trying to help minimize the effects of the situation. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming that Lewis Rossman has also done a video on this. If I can find that, I will post a link uh, in the end screen. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me. That is our show. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and this is Lawful Masses, your favorite legal news and education channel. We are a community supported channel on YouTube and Twitch and Floatplane, and we get financial support for from you, our watchers and listeners, uh, on patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsus.com slash law. Thank you very much for your monthly support in the month of April. At the $50 plus level, thank you to Wes Delge, Video Quarantined, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Spirit Bear, Michael Pierce, Yonda Gray, Daniel Perez, Aspernari, Joe Tyson, Benjamin Hightoff, Stephen, Ada, Cute Grills in Your Area, Longreach Jones, Zachary Cheney, Nicely Done Defense, Wesley Mullen from Mullen PC, Sean McNamara, Josh Baker, Ugly Grill, Gregory, Shiloh T, Michael Moore, and Beastman. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on the LED panel next to me here. Uh, all of the supporters are on that panel and go in the description of the videos that drop. We recognize you monthly starting on the second of the month because of the way Patreon and sponsors process on the first of the month. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. I love you all. Have a great week. I'll see you in the videos that drop. Bye.